Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for coming back. I have the funnest lesson. Oh, we had so much fun putting this together, our group did, and we've been percolating on this for a while, and I'm delighted I get to bring this to you today. And it's going to be from the seven letters to the left behind church. We're going to do a topical study today, and we're going to use Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. We're going to talk about that hidden manna that the overcomers get. So let me read that verse, Revelation 2, 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Okay. Now, what I want to establish in this video, you know, as we know, the seven letters are written to the Left Behind Church. And what I want to reveal in this video is that the raptured bride is the hidden manna that will be given to the Left Behind Church. And a mystery solved, the bride is also the white stone that has a new name engraven in her. Okay, now, I want to do some word studies in this verse. So when it says, to him that overcometh, I will give to eat, well, that word means eat, but it also means meat. So God is going to give left behind church members meat, good word, a hidden word that they have not received before. They have not been studying. Uh, they haven't been listening to the right Christian leaders. Whatever, you know, for many reasons, uh, they're left behind. The seven letters tell us. Plus, there's going to be Jews being grafted in. Brand new converts are going to be reading these seven letters. And so they're going to be right away getting some deep truths from this hidden bride, the hidden manna. And it goes on to say, of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone. Okay, that word white, it means light. Yes, like light emanating from a stone. Oh, you guys, okay, so that word stone, what it means, it's a pebble. And it's a, it's a way that the Jews used to vote, like they would have a black pebble and a white pebble, and so when they wanted to vote yay or nay, they would throw in their pebble and, and count the, the white pebbles. Well, so this stone, it means a voting ballot, a ticket of admission, a verdict of acquittal, a voice. Huh. So the bride is the hidden manna, is a light emanating stone that has a ticket of admission. That's why she was raptured pre-trib and she has a voice. And in the stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Well, that word receiveth, it means take away, take up. So the one who is taken up, taken away at the pre-trib rapture, that person is hidden manna. That person is a stone. They have received a ticket of admission, a verdict of acquittal. Oh, okay. This, this is so much fun. Okay. So a person's name, her name, the helpmate's name, that's, that's the person's identity. You know, when I was born, my parents gave me my name because they owned me. Well, when we're raptured, we go to the father. He's our father. He is going to name us. Mm. So our names are going to be hidden from the left behind church. Because you see, there's no room for celebrity status among the helpmate bride. She is an uncelebrated servant of the church now and will continue to be that uncelebrated servant to the left behind church. So anybody looking to make a name for themselves, big ministry, a name for their church, a name for their ministry, whatever that name is, whatever they choose to call it, 
There's no celebrity status among any of those who are raptured up. So people who can't handle it, not being well known, well, the Father already knows who they are. So the left behind yet saved Christians who humble themselves, who repent and pray for a teachable heart, they will be given the hidden manna, a light bearing stone will be coming to them and revealing deep truths for them. Okay, so now think about this. After the pre-tribulation rapture of the bride, you know, it's not going to take too long for a left behind ministry leader to decide how they're going to handle having egg on their face. When, you know, they're going to have to stand before their listeners that they've been leading and explain why they are left behind and their listeners are left behind and find themselves in that first half of Daniel's 70th week, that first set of 1260 days. So they're either going to justify themselves and their messages, uh, or they're going to have to figure out, you know, justify why they've been just parroting other ministry leaders. They're going to have to justify why they've been giving misleading messages or they're going to humble themselves and not make any excuses. They will bow their hearts before God and repent and will encourage their listeners to do the same. So that's kind of a test. The pre-trib rapture is going to really test a lot of those left behind people and you know we'll be seeing how they handle that. So God will give the church time to overcome that initial shock of being left behind and time to repent. And perhaps that's what one of the sets of 10 days is for. 10 days of testing, 10 days of temptation. You know, each left behind person is going to have to go through that period of introspection. So those who are humble, repentant, are teachable, they will begin receiving hidden manna. Because not, God is not going to send them deeper truths if they're not willing to learn. Okay, so now let's refresh our memories on what the manna was. And we're going to apply the literal application and the spiritual application so that we know what we the the bride is going to be when we are raptured and so that we will know what the left behind saints are going to receive so if you want to turn to exodus 16 4 and i'll read here out of the new american standard bible the lord said to moses behold i will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether or not they will walk in my instruction. Okay, so we learned that this is bread and it's being it's raining down on them from heaven. And they were to go out every day and gather a day's portion. Well, this is what the bride is doing now. She's studying the word every day. She's getting the new revelations that the Holy Spirit is speaking forth into the atmosphere every day. If you're not listening, you're not going to pull it down into your spirit. You're going to miss that day's portion. Okay, we see that this is a test, whether or not they're going to walk in those instructions. Okay, now, this is not going to be an exhaustive study. I'm leaving you lots of scriptures for you to study out on your own and discover. And there's a lot of trails that lead off from this study. And... Um, there, every one of them is a delight. But now let's go to Exodus 16, 13. It says, In the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. So every morning they're going to go out and collect that portion, and it comes in the form of dew around the camp. It's not going to come right to their bedside. they got to get up out of bed. they got to schedule it into their day, and they've got to go out and gather their daily revelation just like we're doing now we've got to change our schedule and make room for doing this verse 14 when the layer of dew evaporated behold on the surface of the wilderness 
There was a fine flake-like thing, fine as the frost on the ground. Okay, verse 15. When the sons or the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, one another, what is it? They didn't even have a name for it. What is it? They didn't know what it was. For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Verse 31. The house of Israel named it manna. And it was like coriander seed white and its taste was like wafers with honey okay so the name of the substance was hidden from the children of israel just like the name in leviticus in revelation 217 only the bride is going to know her new name his new name that's engraved on them well so too this manna the name of it was hidden. They had to name it. Oh my goodness. This is so fun. Okay. And okay, let's take it. We're going to we're going to take a little trail here. We see that from Exodus 16:31, it was like seed. Oh, the word of God is called seed. It was white. Oh, just like in Revelation 2:17, the white stone. It's white. Its taste was like wafers with honey. Mm, I love honey. I eat a little bit of honey every day. Well, we're going to take one of these trails. Let's. I'm just going to pull out a few verses. We're going to talk about honey because this is significant. And you can do way more studies on honey on your own. Genesis 43:11, New American Standard Bible. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best products of the land in your bags and carry down to the man as a present. So referring to Joseph, who was in Egypt because they wanted to go buy food from Joseph. And we've done a study on this. So it goes on to say a little balm and a little honey, aromatic gum, put that in your back pocket. It's going to be important. And myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds. So, Jacob is telling his sons, get the finest present. And isn't that interesting that honey was one of the finest presents among those gifts to be taken to Joseph, who's a type of Jesus in that passage. Okay, look at Exodus 3.17. So I said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, to the Hittite and to the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite to a land flowing with milk and honey. So see, this was a precious gift from God to the nation of Israel. When they come into the promised land, there will be honey. So see, it's something that's valuable to God also. Okay, look at Psalms 119, 103. Hmm. How sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So the word of God is as sweet, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So as we receive the word of God and as we speak the word of God, oh, it's honey in our mouth. Well, so is the seed, which is the word of God. So do you see how everything is so connected here? And do you see how we can take so many trails from this lesson and you're going to make so many amazing new discoveries to find out what you as the raptured bride are going to be and what the left behind saints are going to receive through you from God the Father. Okay. Let's turn to Exodus 16.33 to learn more about the manna. Exodus 16.33. Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer full of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. Verse 34. So Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. 
So what's interesting about that is in Hebrews 9.4, we learned that the jar, it was a golden jar. Ah, wow. Verse 35, we learned that the sons of Israel ate the manna for 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. So the whole time they're in the wilderness, right up until when they entered into the promised land themselves, which to us is heaven. To the left behind church, it'll be when their spirit enters heaven, whether it's through martyrdom or through that mid-trib rapture. So, right here we learn, Jesus is the golden jar. He is the manna. The manna is in him preserved in the Ark of Covenant, which is God's throne. He is in God's throne. The raptured bride is going to be placed in the golden jar with the manna. That's where we're getting the manna. It's been preserved for us. We've been eating on it now, every day for years. We've been eating the hidden manna that the sleepy church isn't acquiring. We're filling our vessels with the hidden manna so that we have something to give the left behind church that we are serving. Okay, Numbers 11.6. It says, God's people lost their appetite for the manna which is the word of God. Wow. When you read that passage, you're going to see that. It's really heartbreaking. Their flesh became abhorred by it. They didn't want the manna. You know, there's a lot of people, they don't want any more of the word of God. Maybe they've been in many Bible studies previously. Maybe they've sat under great teaching previously. So maybe they think they know everything they need to know in order to be raptured. They don't understand that just like for three and a half years before God made his big move and Christ was crucified on the cross, they're not realizing that all these years before the rapture, God is revealing big things every day before his next big move, the pre-trib rapture of the bride. They don't think they need to go out and collect fresh words from God. Mm. Numbers 11.7, we see that its appearance was like bedillium. Well, why is that interesting? Why is that important? Well, that's a fragrant gum. Oh, what did we just learn? What did Jacob tell his sons to put in their bag to take to Joseph as a gift? Aromatic gum. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. We read... Numbers 11, 9, when the dew fell on the camp at night, the manna would fall with it. So the manna falls at night, but by morning they go out and collect it. The dew is evaporated and it left that manna. (laughs) So we learn all kinds of little details in every verse. It's revealing just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more about this manna. And it tells us as we follow the trails, how we're going to be delivering the manna to the left behind church. And we're learning the details, how they're going to acquire it, pull it into themselves. Okay. Deuteronomy 8, 3, it says, he, God, humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with the manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Okay, first of all, where have we heard that verse before? Oh, it's a verse that we love here. Matthew 4.4. 4. Matthew 4.4 4 is quoting Deuteronomy 8.3. And so God is saying here in Deuteronomy 8.3 that that left behind church, that is going to be a time of humbling for them. That's one of the purposes for the rapture, to humble those who right now are a little bit proud, proud in their heart 
unteachable, think they know enough to enter in. So God humbled them and let them be hungry. So you see, if people are not hungry for the word of God, it means they're full of the word of the world. They're, they're eating and drinking so much of the world, they're not hungry for the word of God. They're not thirsty for the word of God. But you see, the more of the word of God you eat, oh, the more hungry you get for his word. Haven't you found that to be true? Okay, it also says in Deuteronomy 8.3 that it's, it's, God is feeding them with food that they had not heard before. They did not know, nor did their fathers know. So just like the generation before us, and just like you up to now, these last moments before we go up, God is teaching things that nobody has known before. He's not revealed it before. And it's from the scriptures. It's like he's removing a veil and giving us light in our spirit so we can understand the word. Okay, let's look at Deuteronomy 8.16. God goes on to say, In the wilderness he fed you manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you. And now we learn a new detail, that he might test you. Why? To do good for you in the end. See, this is what's on the Father's heart. It's not that he's being mean. It's not that he's being unreasonable with the left behind church, the left behind saved Christians. It's just that they've not been eating the best from the kingdom of God. They've been eating old manna, stale manna, and anointing from past days. Great teaching in their day, but they're not receiving the teaching of today. So he wants to do good for them in the end, at the end of their lives, whether it's martyrdom or that rapture. He tested them. Well, where do we see Jesus testing people? Mm. John chapter 6 is one of the times. John chapter 6 verses 5 and 6 regards the feeding of 5,000. Listen to John chapter 6 verses 5 and 6. Therefore, Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these may eat? This he was saying to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Mm. So Jesus was testing Philip. Well, we see that later on in that chapter, God is going to be testing a whole slew of his followers, a whole bunch of his disciples, because he starts saying some very strange things, things they have never heard before. He says in John 6:51, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Okay, so this was very strange to his listeners. He was testing them with some manna from heaven, a new revelation for that season. This is where he says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood or you have no life in yourself. And we read in that passage that many people who are following him, many disciples left him at that time. Mm. They didn't pass the test. How sad. Big mistake, right? Okay, you can study that out more on your own. Let's look at Nehemiah 9.20. We learn a little more detail about the manna. Nehemiah 9.20. You gave your good spirit to instruct them. Your manna you did not withhold from their mouth and you gave them water for their thirst. Ah, we learn the manna is the Spirit of God to instruct them. See, we're learning the physical application, the literal application, as well as the spiritual application, because the bride is going to be literally feeding people who have no food, just like Jesus fed the crowds that came to him. 
and we're going to give them spiritual food. So you see, we've got to look at the verses now, these passages as literal and spiritual in order to get the lessons. Okay, a little bit more here. Psalms 78, 24 and 25. Oh, I love this. Psalms 78, 24 and 25. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them food from heaven. Man did eat the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. So it was not just a scraggly amount. Abundance. And it says here, it is from heaven, food from heaven. It rained on them. And it says here, man did eat the bread of angels. You know, even in heaven, the angels are eating the words of God. That's how they're getting their sustenance. And we see here that the manna, they were eating the bread of angels. The angels were supplying it. They were providing, the bringing it. Just like when Jesus sat at the top of the mountain and the disciples were running up to get the, the bread that he was breaking and they would run down the mountain and feed it to the, the people that were sitting in crowds of groups of 50 to 100. The disciples would run up, get bread, run down, run up, run down, run up, run down, run up, run down, run up, run down. Ah, just like the bride of Christ is going to be running up and running down, bringing manna, literal and spiritual food for people. Oh my goodness. So you, the bride, you are the hidden manna of Revelation 2.17 and you are the light emanating stone from Jesus who is the rock, who is the light. And you are going to have a new name engraved in your stone, in your spirit, in your DNA. Ooh, the DNA of heaven. Okay, now I want to wrap this up. I mean, we could just go on and on and on. It's I just find this whole subject fascinating. But now I want to wrap this up. Think about this. The Pharisees, we see from the scriptures, would stone people who broke the law. They, you know, we saw Stephen being stoned because they considered him as breaking the law. They wanted to stone Jesus. They thought he was breaking the law. Well, we see that they wanted to stone that woman caught in adultery, but Jesus intervened. Well, so too, Jesus is going to stone the left behind church. Uh, however, he's going to stone her with light emanating stones, who is the bride bringing manna, the light of the word, instruction with, of the word, insight into the word. He's going to be throwing stones at the left behind church in every geographic location. Because you see, once the bride of Christ goes up, and you know, right now, it is not the will of God that any Gentile in the church is left behind. He's made provision for all in the church saved Christians to participate, to receive the reward of the pre-trib rapture of the bride. But he knows some are going to be left behind. But then the Jews, believing Israel, is going to be grafted in. So you see, the left behind church is the father's wife who was caught in adultery. They are going to be grafted in. Believing Israel is going to be grafted in. And instead of stoning his adulterous wife, he's going to be throwing grace at her. This manna is going to be for the left behind Jews and Gentiles, new converts coming in, waking up the sleepy church to all who are repentant, humble, teachable. You are going to be sent back to serve. You're going to be girded to serve. So right now we are every day collecting this hidden manna and we're receiving it into our spirit. So when we go up, We've got something to give the Left Behind Church. Okay, thank you so much for listening. I have enjoyed bringing this study to you, and I hope you have fun studying out further.
And I hope you have a, an amazing Thanksgiving. If I get this posted before Thanksgiving. If not, enjoy the leftovers. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.